Hello traders, I'm Jeff Holden, head of recruiting at SMB Capital. SMB Capital is a proprietary trading firm where we trade equities, options, and futures as automated and discretionary traders. We've been around since 2005 and our office is in Midtown Manhattan. In this video, we talk with a developing trader on our desk and, and ask them a very simple question. Do you have a trade strategy? Uh, my name is Rick. I'm a new developer in trading here at SMB. Uh, I start actively doing um, day trading from January of 2022. So since this year, I joined. I first joined the DNA course with SMB, where I was able to get access to this core and where I was actively like doing a lot of trading and like putting in our Discord channel or our like daily reports, like big pictures all the game daily game planning that I have and I was able to earn that entry to the second level two, which is um, also a level that is very similar where I need to upload all the good uh, habits that we have here, like downloading the big picture, downloading our gaming plan, daily review and playbooks. I did also that every day and submitted 30 entries and that's how I was able to earn my spot here to, to, to trade with you guys. Uh, and also, once I finished the uh, DNA, uh, DNA course, I also took the Winning Trader course, which has been very useful to get familiar with most of the, what playbooks I like the most and improving on my game as a whole. Um, so I currently uh, am a, I'm a software engineer. Um, I've been doing trading actually since like five years ago, very no finding a lot of success. Um, so that's why um, I found a lot of success in my career, joining a lot of big companies like Google, for example, where I found a lot of success. But one of my dreams always was joining SMB Capital, which I believe have the best traders in the world, which a lot of good mentorship like Steve, Steven and Bella that I admire a lot. So I appreciate you guys for the opportunity to show my work here. That's great. And what you're talking about, Rick, is the tier system that we created. So anybody that's a member of our community um, can use the Discord channel. And it really was started by students um, who wanted to kind of connect and share ideas. Uh, we've worked with them to, to try and create this path, which gives people who do the work, which is really the foundational element of what we do on our desk, is show up and do the work, show up and do really good work, uh, show up and do really good work consistently. If you do that, we're going to try and create as many opportunities for you to be a successful part of this desk as possible. And Rick, you know what you talked about with the tier system, that's exactly the path that we created. So um, you know, I'm really happy that you've worked through that path. I'm really happy that you showed up, just did the work, and then showed up and did the work consistently um, and did it very well. And, and, and I'm excited to be going into this playbook with you today. So uh, please take it away. Today, I'm going to be uh, showing you one of my best uh, playbook setup, which is the short retracement trade. Uh, this will be CRM, uh, Salesforce, and this will be a second day play after earnings that I took on March 7, 2022. If you want to learn three more real world setups that our traders use, including the simple setup that we teach all of our new traders and the setup that turned one of our traders into a seven figure big money earner, check out the free webinar that we're currently running. Just go ahead and click the link that should be appearing now at the top right hand corner of your screen. That will open up the free registration page in a new window, so don't worry, you won't lose this video. You can also visit tradingworkshop.com to register for this free intensive workshop. You're gonna learn more in a couple of hours from this trading workshop than from years of online education. So for uh, stock selection and technology, so there are two things that I have uh, been improving a lot over the past month. It's how to find stocks that are in play. So I'm always looking for stocks that have good volatility and liquidity. Um, a lot of some, some of the criteria that I use to do most more customized filters are, for example, uh, ATR greater or equal to three, uh, a change percentage uh, greater or equal to 3%, a high arbal, which basically will mean that the trade, we have a lot of volume trading on that day, 
that the price is greater than 10. I usually avoid trading uh, lowest cap stocks. Um, I found a lot of success trading mostly like high beta names, um, like big companies. Um, also another criteria that I use is the gap. I, uh, every time I see uh, I stock gapping up or down 3%, I'm very interested. Uh, but additional to those criteria, I also have um, criteria of if the stock have earnings, if the stock has a specific news. Uh, all these different data points, I put it in the specific um, filters, uh, or what we call it scripts. So specifically, I use Think or Swim custom my filters to build a specific scripts for to find what are the best stocks that I gonna be focused on. Also, I use the SMB uh, radar and the scanner to help me find the intraday fundamentals and the stocks that are in play as well. Usually, um, I train train to only focus on two, maximum three stocks. I found a lot of success doing that because I can focus all my energy on that instead of trying to chasing everything. And if there is some stocks that are over, if I have like four or five stocks that are very interested, what I usually do is I put alerts uh, because I don't want to keep my focus away from those two or three stocks that I usually just like to play. But I also want to keep those other stocks that are very interesting in terms of setups uh, on my radar so I can get an alert if they reach a specific level. That's an absolute best practice of getting those those stocks and then setting alerts. But I love the fact that you're doing a really nice job of selecting the right stock for you using easily accessible filters. Um, you don't have to overcomplicate it. it. It really is just something where if you can pick the right stock for you by cutting out a lot of the things, um, you're gonna put yourself in a really good position consistently. Cool, so now I'm gonna talk about the big picture. Um, Overall, I um, want, I always like to focus on three things um, when I look at the big indexes. It's what happened yesterday, what is happening in pre-market, and what are the levels. Um, over, overall, I found myself to be a type of trader that I want to process as much information as I, as I can. So in order to process different information, I need to have very concrete um, definitions and very concrete um, data about how what I'm trying to, to see or what I'm trying to look at. Because when I have a lot of information or too much details, I get confused. Um, so that's why I like to keep my things very clean. And let, so it gives me an idea of what's happening on the overall market. So for example, the, in this case, we have the SPY. So what I'm looking what I'm looking in the morning here is what, what, how do we trade, how did the SPY, the SPY trade yesterday? So here we see the SPY gap down uh, at the open, then it sell at the close, uh, at the, it sell at the open, and then it retains the opening price at 432 in the afternoon, and it, it closed really, really close to the opening price, which is, it was uh, 432.17. Do you happen to have charts of this? You know, yes, we're, yeah, yeah, if you can just jump to the charts, because we're so visual, that would be awesome. Yeah, yeah. So if we go to the charts, the daily chart, right? So in the yeah. spice, we can see that we are on the downtrend here. And yeah. then we see that here we are specifically bouncing, but now we yeah. start tracing. So this is a really key area for me because the trade I'm trying to see is a short retracement trade. So I really like to see that we are, are bound, we already bounce and yeah. we are retracing. And this move is the same for the, for the queues. Yeah. Uh, and also for the VIX, uh, I noticed that we were trading above 30, which is uh, a key level, and we were uptrending, which showed that we have good volatility in the market. Nice. Yeah, good job on that. Uh, now we're going to uh, the intraday fundamentals. So for the intraday fundamentals, we have an ATR of 9.07. We have a daily... Uh, Volume, average daily volume of 7.5 million. We have an air ball of 85. We have a short flow of 1.47 and we gap, uh, we have a gap of 3.45. So the numbers that are in red are the numbers that I really like. Um, uh, for some reason, when I look at my data, I notice that I perform my best when um, stocks are between the ATR of three and nine. 
uh, when there is a, a very huge ATR, I found like it's a little bit um, for me tricky to manage my risk, uh, but I feel very, very uh, comfortable trading stocks that are between 3 and 10 ATR. So that's really interesting that you found a sweet spot for you there, because what you're actually doing is you're cutting out a lot of the things that you know you don't have edge with. If it's got too much of an ATR, well, that typically means a lot of stocks with too much of an ATR touch too many prices. If it's too small of an ATR, honestly, typically it just moves too small. Uh, it, it, does, it won't move enough and, and you have to be really aggressive with your sizing. Um, we were talking about that maybe a week ago about a stock that, you know, on average would move about a dollar, dollar and a half. Well, you have to be really sized up or be perfect as a trader in order to catch that entire move to really make it even worth your while. So it's interesting that you've used your scanners to find that little bit of a sweet spot for you where something's going to move, but it's probably not going to be touch too many prices, which, you know, helps just make make it a little easier on you for your decision making process. Cool. So um, so moving forward, I also want to cover about like um, just to recap about the earnings. Uh, we have an APS bid and also revenue bid. Uh, we also raised um, guidance, uh, full year guidance of 2023. Uh, but something that I noticed here is that the stock actually bounced pre-earnings. For three days, we went from 184 to 210, which was 14% plus. Um, so it was a very big bounce. Um, so the question that I had was when I was doing the, 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 the game planning is, are we going to have more legs to go up or not? Are we, we going to retrace? Um, so also we have the levels, the support and resistance levels. Um, we have the technical indicators that are personally used. Um, I wanted to point this out because it's very important for me how I found more consistently in terms of keeping my charts cleaner. Before I used to use a lot of like moving average, a lot of Fibonacci extension, like MID, a lot of things that didn't even work. I noticed didn't work, but only right now, I only keep my, st uh, my, my, my chart very simple by only using BWAP, the support and resistance levels, the volume and the tape. And so far it's been working great for me. So now we're gonna go through the long-term technicals for uh, Salesforce. So as we say here, right? So we see that we broke the main uptrend and now we are currently in a downtrend. Uh, where we are right now, it's we are in this spot where we are trying to bounce and we are retracing. I really, really like to see this. Uh, for some reason, I noticed that every time I would do this, uh, this main playbook trade that show retracement play, when we are retracing in the big picture, uh, at the big um, long-term technicals, it works really, really good. Um, and then we have here the support and resistance levels as well that we are looking at. Now for the short-term technicals, here we have the one minute, five minute, 30 minutes and daily chart. Um, so on the daily chart as well, we can see that we are downtrending and we, we bounce and now, now we are retracing here. As well as we can see that on the 30 minutes, we have been uh, we broke the, the the bounce that we had and then we are, have been retracing. And we have this level that is one of the key levels I'm looking for this trade. It, it will be the 204 four level. So there's a lot going on on these charts. Um, and I love that you're keeping it simple. Um, there's a lot of information going on in this chart. So you've got, you know, the daily up on the top right, it looks like. And, you know, um, You've got the volume overlaid there, so it, it, sorry, it gets me a little confused here, but I'm looking at the daily and it looks like we had the bounce and then, uh, what day are we looking at? Which one of those candles are we looking at? For so it, it could be the... It will, so the, the trade that I put was yeah. on March 7, so this this um, yeah. this okay. includes the, the trade that I have. So basically the day before, we are looking at this candle of here and before. Okay. The, yeah, I was just a little confused by that. Okay, that makes sense. Cool. Now um, I'm going to be covering about the trading strategy. And this yeah. is very important for me because this will sh basically represent of why did I put this trade and what I was looking for specifically. Um, so for this, um, this, my playbook, this is my best um, strategy that I have. That is the short addressment trade. 
Um, so as we know, we, when we combine the catalyst plus the setup plus the thesis plus the playbook plus the tape, we have one good trade. I just want to take a second here because, you know, even I'm a little confused on this nut and I want some clarity. When you say catalyst, what, what do you mean by catalyst? Yeah, when I say catalyst, I mean about the how, where are we on the big picture? Is this like an earnings trade? Is this a fair day? Day one trade, second day. Yep. So catalyst, catalyst could be earnings, whatever, whatever the news story is, whatever, the whatever's really driving the price action or driving the narrative. I guess. Um, when you say setup, what does that mean? So when I when I said about the setup, it's the type of pattern I'm looking for this trade. Is this is, is this like a continuation to the downside? If this is a second day continuation to a downside, for example, that's the specific setup. Okay. And then thesis? So the thesis is what I'm looking for. Like my thesis is I'm looking for a continuation to the downside. So I'm looking for a retracement plate where I can short the stock. So that's kind of like the thesis. It's yep. something that I need, to, I need confirmation. It's something I think is going to happen, but it, it hasn't happened yet. And then playbook? Yeah, the playbook is my the playbook that I have based on the, all the trades that are my best trades, that my A plus setup trades, um, and that's how I fit that strategy into that the thesis and the setup. And then the tape. And the tape will be all the orders that comes in the the buying and selling pressure. Uh, all the orders and the price. I, I recognize that sometimes we gloss over this stuff and we just kind of jump ahead. And so I really did want to cover that to make sure that we were talking about it. So thank you for doing that here. Yeah. So, um, so to continue, right? So when we, when, what I want to see it to put this trade is that overall catalyst is weak. I want to see, uh, one of the things I want to see is, uh, selling on the opening, uh, opening price. And also, I want to see that when we start selling, once we start selling, I want to see that there is some retracement, like we see here, for example, on these examples. Um, also, I want to see from all these checks, I usually see more than five plus checks on my favor. Um, I gon when I have five plus checks on my favor, I'm gonna get very interested in terms of like putting a little more risk because my risk reward ratio will be um, better. Uh, and also the higher checks, the higher the number of checks I have, the more confident I will feel to put more size. Um, in terms of the checks uh, for this short retracement trade, I'm looking for the spy of the queues to be downtrending. I'm also looking for the specific sector that this company is, that it's downtrend, uh, in the downtrend. I'm also looking that the price we are at a specific, at or below a specific key resistance level. I'm, I'm also looking for the price to be at or below at the big WAP and also big WAP to be downtrending. This is really important. Um, and another thing also is very important for me is I wanna see that the price is close. Ideally for both is the price is close to resistance and big WAP. Um, and another check will be that, that uh, pre-market is downtrending. I also want to see uh, multi uh, multi time frame chart that are downtrending that are all aligned to the downside. Um, negative news uh, also. I want to see the long and short term charts to be downtrending. Uh, in terms of the tape, I want to see a strong sellers on the tape at a specific level. Um, I'm trying to put my my size. And on the retracement side, I also want to see when it's retracing a very light um, volume when it's retracing. So those are the different checks that I, I look in terms of putting this trade, uh, this short retracement trade. I'm struggling with where the trade strategy is. Like I, I hear all the check marks in your favor, but what's the actual trade strategy? And maybe you cover this in the execution, but help me understand this here because I, I don't see a strategy here. I see. I see a lot of checks in your favor, but what's what's the strategy on the short retracement trade? Yeah, so the main strategy here is that I wanted to be, I want to be able to put a short a short size when we are retracing on the specific stock. For example, in this picture that we see here, we see that we have a selling on the open, and then we are retracing at this yeah. at this specific area. It's where I'm analyzing 
should, should I put this short or not? And yep. in terms of like deciding this factor of putting that or not, I'm quickly looking at the checks that are supporting this short. Do yep. I have a hedge or not? Are we holding this resistance or not? So that's basically the, the, the idea of the short retracement rate at the high level. And I like the, I like the high level of it and, and I think that's very good, but then you need it. You, you do need professional traders all need a little more clarity on their strategy. Is your strategy to short a break of that range? Is your strategy to short into the high of that range and then try not to, and then look for a break of the range to the downside? Is your strategy to just short anywhere in that range, wider stop, high of day, looking for at least another leg lower that's an equal distance to the, the first leg? Um, you know, those are those are details of this strategy that really make or break this strategy. What you're doing up to this point is putting a lot of checks in your favor, which is what professional traders do. That's what you have to do. You have to identify the right stock for you and put as many checks in your favor as possible. If you're not doing that, you're not really giving yourself a chance to succeed. But then to take it a step further, you have to really define the strategy of what are you actually trying to do in this price action? Right. So, so for the price actions here, Mm -hmm. um, so what I'm trying to do here is w one thing, like I mentioned, right? Like one of the key checks that I'm looking for is are we holding resistance, a specific resistance level or or not? And if we're holding, um, how is the big web doing and the other checks? In terms of like, like you mentioned, be a specific. Yes, in terms of like putting a trade, I always trying to put a trade in the very close, for example, to if I see there is a hole, is holding below a specific resistance, I wanted to be able to have a short very close to the, very close or at that specific resistance level. Um, and that's how I usually try to do. Yeah, where's your, where's your stop in that? Yeah, so in terms of the stop, I usually, it depends on the overall setup, for example, on the on the next trade management that I will show, my stop will be the high of the day, for example, um, okay. the high of the day or the the short term resistance level that is the next level. Okay. All right, let's jump to the next slide. I'm interested to see. So this is the trade management that um, that I I have here. Um, so we have the checks here, like we like I mentioned, I have a plus check on my favor. But before going to the checks, I wanted to go through. Uh, what was happening at this moment uh, on this specific chart. So I, I noticed that uh, we had this key resistant level that it, it was between 204 and 204.5. This specific resistant area was an area that, uh, that yesterday, the previous day, it was a very big area because it, it was able to hold and then it break and then it were not able to put above that level. So. Here we notice at the open we broke the level, but we're not able we were not able to stay above the level. So we flashed down, then we went we went below BWAP, and then we started retracing. So we were retracing here, and this is the price where I was. This is the action that I was. I got very interested uh, because yeah. now I'm what I'm the thesis that I have is this will hold below. And if it doesn't break above the 204.5, I want to be able to start building size. Um, because based on all the check that I have, and um, what I see here, for example, the, the previous day, uh, the day high, we were not able to go above the 204.5. So the 204.5 was a key resistant area for me. So I start, actually I start building my positions at 204, as we see here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, every, every time, we, I noticed that sellers step up at the 104.5 and sell uh, buyers were not able to move the prices way farther than that. I got, I sizing, I started building my position in each bar where we, where we were not able to stay above that for uh, 204.5, I started building my position, building my position. Now, when we broke this, this is the confirmation that I was looking for. I, that's where I put my last size. And that's where we were um, below 204, and then we went below BWAP. Uh, in terms of the checks at this time, 
So at this time, we I noticed the the spice. We it wasn't red and it was trending uh, down. The industry, the tech industry, was also down. The short and um, long term chart of this uh, stock also was downtrending. Um, like like I mentioned, we were at a key and resistant uh, area. Then we also were at at or below B what and B what was downtrending. Uh, also, it was close to be web and resistant area. So both things were close. Also, we were in a retracement setup. As I mentioned here, right, we were retracing. We were in a retracement setup. And also, I saw a strong sellers on the tape at 204.5. Again, I, I don't feel like this is a trade strategy. These are just checks in your favor, right? Right. These are checks in my favor that support this short retracement Trade. Correct. But again, the, the trade, so I see the trade management. Yeah, that makes sense. But like what, what, why I'm pressing you on this is if this is a retrace, short retracement trade, you know, your reason to sell is a low of day. Okay. Well, if it's a retracement, it should retrace a portion of it and then continue. You know, it's, it's almost like you're getting caught in between a scalp trade and a trending trade, because if, by not having a trade strategy. Am I missing something here? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you're. I'm not too specific in this one. Because you're making a good trade. You're shorting into a resistance level, and then you're buying it when it comes down. But I don't. I still don't see a trade strategy. I see, you know, trades, but not like a strategy for a short retracement trade. Right. Right. What? Well, so yeah. Yeah. You're right. So for example, for this first trade that I made, right, like it, it actually tried to test the high of the day, but for that second one, I think this one actually was a retracement because this was no. Exactly. Yeah. That's a retracement, right? The first one's like you're just shorting into a resistance level. Well, that's not a really a retracement trade. That's that's just a trade. The second one is actually, you know, that's a retracement trade. And that also has a different set of criteria and everything like that. So that's what I'm trying to get at is what trade are you making here? Because if you're shorting into a pop, that's one trade. But if you're shorting a resistance, that's, that's a different trade and it should have totally different sets of, or I'm sorry, short into, into a retracement. Like that should have a totally different set of risk reward parameters. So, you know, let's really make sure we're being granular here because again, you don't want to do all the work to put yourself in a really good stock for you, which is what professional traders do. And you don't want to let all the checks be in your favor and build up for you, which is what professional traders have to do to not have a good trade strategy, which again, that's what professional traders have to do. They have to have a really good trade strategy. So you've done the first two thirds of, of what a professional trader has to do but then you're just kind of making trades. You're not really executing with a real trade strategy. Or maybe you are, but like, I'm, I'm not getting it or, or it's not outlined very clearly here. But you know, the reason is, is if you've got the deck stacked in your favor, you want to know exactly what you're going to do with that. You want to know how you're going to bet. You want to know how aggressively you're going to bet. You know, you want to know what should happen to tell you that you need to be out what should happen to tell you that you need to be adding to that bet. If you're going to do all the work to sit there and let all the odds get in your favor, you need to do enough work to make sure that you know exactly what you're going to do after that. Yeah. So for example, for this one, right? Like, like you mentioned, I should know where should I get out and which, what's my target. So in the, for this case, uh, like there, there is like two things that I noticed, like I'm not too specific, right? Like, like you mentioned, this one is a retracement. But this Correct. actually, we are testing the high of the day. Correct. That's a failed breakout. If you're going to make that trade, it's a failed breakout. But you start it, you start it with an anticipatory failed breakout, which is really just a guess. That's not trade strategy. That's just guessing that it's going to go down. And like, yeah, you've got the odds and you're, you've got the stacks in your favor of all of the, and today's a good example to talk about this because you have weakness in the market, you have, you know, long term chart was downtrending, you have all of these like checks in your favor. 
but we saw what happened to CRM today on earnings. It just ran up for eight points or something like that, right? So like if you're shorting there and you don't really have a clearly defined trade strategy, you're kind of just guessing. The second one makes sense to me. The first one just makes no sense at all to me. I mean, it works and don't get me wrong. Like it probably works because you stacked enough odds in your favor to have that trade work. But I, I, I don't hear, I can't hear you clearly articulating, you know, what specifically about that first one worked um, and how you're going to manage it. But I do hear on this second leg, very valid trade. Yeah, yeah, I'm 100% agree with you. Um, I, I think the first trade, I, I wasn't really clear about the strategy here. I'm mostly focused on if we are holding this key resistance level, because I think once I saw like we were holding the 204.5 and a lot of sellers stepping that, I was very interested because they were not able to put a new high, high of the day. So that was kind of like my risk. But it's a different trade, right? It's not the trade that you've, you've stacked all the odds in your favor for. That's, that's like a, let's see if this works. And it worked, which is great. That's in trading. Sometimes you're like, let's see if it works and it works. That's the good part of it. Sometimes you're like, let's see if this works and it doesn't. Uh, that's the other side of it. And, but you have to prepare for, let's see if this works and it doesn't. Because those are the ones that can be really detrimental. Those are the ones that leave people feeling just completely demoralized. Um, those are the ones that are, I believe, responsible for a lot of traders not being around anymore. Um, it's because they take those ideas and they're like, let's see if this works and it doesn't, and they don't have a clear trade strategy. So let's talk about that second trade, the actual trade here. Yeah. So on the second trade, so, so once, um, I took profit here, I took uh, 50% of, of the first trade that I made, I was holding 50%. So here when, when I saw the things that I look here, right? Like I was looking that we were holding uh, on BWAP and we were below this key resistant area. So I was start um, shorting about around like 203.6 uh, and risking above 204, uh, 204.01. Um, so one of the reasons why I really like this uh, specific retracement was because BWAP start down trending uh, and also I noticed that the sellers start stepping up um, on this below for, uh, 204. Um, and all, in this area was where I was actually able to pull my size back, the size that I took in the first profit. So I was full size again here. Uh, and what I was looking here was to break the law of the day uh, and start taking profits once we break that and then to see if there is a second leg. Um, so in terms of taking profit for this for this one, uh, once we uh, we were um, we broke uh, the low of the day, I start um, taking twenty percent off at low of the day. Then I start taking fifty percent at two hundred two, and twenty five percent at twenty uh, two hundred one point five. Um, and the reason uh, I think I didn't. So that's one of the things that I need to improve. I didn't hold some of the shares for the next leg down uh, because what I was expecting it was like a more stronger move to the downside. And once I didn't see that strong move to the downside, I didn't want to hold this for the consolidation. So I just wanted to uh, take uh, some profit. Uh, and also- another Rick, if I'm being honest, I don't think you had a trade strategy here. I think you, I, I see you didn't have clearly delineated reasons to sell. You were trying to make a strategy off of a feel when you take some profits there. If your target's low of day, you, you know, that's one thing. If your target's low of day and you're looking for a second leg, that's another thing. If your target's low of day, but the price action doesn't feel right. So you're going to take the entire position off. You're not giving yourself a chance to win. If you've done all the other work, give yourself the opportunity to win. So that's again where this trade strategy comes in of if your trade strategy is I hold 50% to low of day, move my stop down for the other half and I keep moving my stop with me, that's a trade strategy. Because that way you, you can build this strategy 
and then you can back test it or you can forward test it. And then you can look at your results at the end of the month and say, listen, I make most of my money on my second leg retracement trades. Here's exactly what my rules for execution are in those trades. That's a repeatable process. What you're doing here, you did well and, and, and it's great. I think you made a lot of really good trading decisions. My only concern is I feel like you're not giving yourself the opportunity to really grow. Because the only way to really grow here, I think, is to develop this trade strategy to a point where you know exactly what decisions you're going to make before you're put in those positions to have to make those decisions. Yeah, and, and I think some of the other things that I also need to improve is about like the, my p and um, I think I got too influenced by my p because I was... Again, uh, if you don't have a trade strategy, you will be influenced by your p and <laughs> because you will be trading your P&L. You will not be trading the trade yeah. strategy. I'm very apprehensive about moving this conversation forward without a clearly delineated trade strategy because I feel like we're looking at a trade. We're not looking at a trade strategy. So let's go through the rest of the playbook, but I really, I'm gonna, I'm gonna expect that you're gonna come, up, come back with a much better trade strategy to move forward. So as I mentioned, we have this big resistant um, area uh, 204 uh, that we were able, we were not able to move above that and we broke. So we move uh, below BWAP and now we are in this uh, area where we are retracing. Now, so we see here that um, sellers step up every time it wants to go above like 200, uh, 203.5. So, when when I saw this uh, struggling of buyers going above three hundred two uh, hundred three point five, I was interested on in putting a size um, for, for to come to the second lay down um, and risking the 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 resistant area, the resistant area that is two hundred four, and then um, risking that uh, having that as a stop, and then for profits will be the low of the day. Um, so here we can see we are we are trying to break above 203.7, but sellers step up really Yeah, fast. they're not even letting it lift at all. No, they, they didn't. They're midpointing so, too, so they're hiding right there. They've been midpointing that entire time. That's very interesting. So they're not even really letting it get up. You know, they're not paying the offer. They're not able to lift the offer. So somebody's sitting there midpointing and, and, you know, getting pretty aggressive there. So that should give you a ton of information. Yeah. And, and that, at this point, I was already also like full size again and like risking the, the, the high of the, 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 the bar high. Yeah. And I really like when I saw this big red bar because uh, I saw a strength in terms of like selling. Yeah, so that's an opportunity, right? You saw what you needed to see when we lifted up there and we failed. That's a huge opportunity. And, and even though you're full size, you could be thinking, all right, I'm not touching anything until I get to low of day or I'm, I'm being more aggressive or whatever you need to think. But like even for the think or swim, like that's really well done. Um, noticing that little moment is so important in this trade. Yeah, I'm definitely that's some, some of the learnings that I, I also have in my peer review. It's no not letting my winners run, especially specifically when Again, have, you don't have if you don't have a real trade strategy, it's tough to let your winners run. Like I really think this is gonna be the title of this video. Do you have a trade strategy? Because you have a really good trade here. And you've put yourself in the best possible position because you've done all this amazing work and yet you're you're, you're going to look back at your results and whatever they are, um, they're not going to be as good as they could have been for the work that you did. So I think we saw the most important moment in this tape. I think we can move forward. Um, I'm, I'm really glad you caught that, but I, I, really, I really thought that was very good. So for the third review, um, what did I learn from this trade? Um, so one of the most important part of this trade was having a hyper focus on cutting uh, my size and position where it breaks 
the when it was break, if it breaks above 205 and this was for the first trade because i was on on the size that i was not able i didn't want to let any loss run too much because i was like 20 percent more of the side that i usually trade um adding to my winners was huge uh, for me today because i was finally able to execute it uh, the setup was good that uh, that I was able to pull the trigger and specifically for the second trade that I made when I was able to put the size back um, on that um, and also for this this is a high probability trade that I make so I was able to put a little bit more of size on the second trade because of all the checks and the technicals that were on my favor as well as the big indexes that were weak that gave me more confidence um, how how could I done this better? Um, I think there there was a third lay down, but I didn't feel confident to pull another short or keep some shares. Um, the way I could have done this better was keeping at least twenty to twenty five percent of my position till end of the day, or till pattern showed me that um, the pattern was absolutely broken. So. Uh, and I shouldn't allow my PNL, uh, my, my PNL to dictate my exit. I should stick with my uh, targets and exit plan without allowing my PNL to overrule them. I think that's a huge uh, learning for me on this trade um, that I need to be more disciplined about like where should I exit and like having a better trade strategy. Um, how could I have uh, trade this different on the next trade? Uh, in terms of exit and targets, I want to focus. I I want to focus more on the process and on my exits and and exit and target rules, and don't allow my PNL to override those rules. Also, in terms of sizing up, keeping, practicing adding extra risk on my A plus setups, uh, and be more strict on my risk management rule. Uh, also, uh, let my winners run. Um, it's something I need to keep working when. And that will help me once I have a better uh, trade strategy is that to keep some shares till the pattern is actually broken or there's reasons to sell. And that's what we covered today. And thanks Jeff for the advice uh, about having a, like a better trade strategy because I feel like having that is going to improve on like also letting my, my winners run. This is the one point that I'll, I'll kind of make that I've seen on my desk and I'm I, I feel very fortunate to be a member of this firm and I feel very fortunate to be able to help with the recruiting process. Um, a part of that recruiting is I, I get the opportunity to speak with a lot of different people about their trading. Um, you know, people that are, have been working on their trading for a little bit of time or a lot of time, people that are really kind of doing a lot of, a lot of work and sometimes very good work. Um, the, probably the number one thing I hear is, oh, if I'm just a little more disciplined, I can do this, or I just need to be a little more disciplined and then my, my P&L will, will turn around. I just need to be a little more disciplined and then then this uh, then I'll be able to, to manage my risk better. Um, if I'm being honest, I think all that's bullshit. I just think you don't have a trade strategy. Like, if you don't have a trade strategy, there is no way you can expect yourself to be disciplined. Same thing going to the gym. If you are like, I need to get in shape and you don't have a strategy to do that, but you just show up to the gym every day and you're like, oh, I hope something happens. Oh, let me drive to McDonald's on the way home. You're not going to get in shape. Like it's just, if you don't have a strategy, you cannot judge how well you are working this process. You can say that I just need more discipline because I need to, I need to really do this and I need this discipline and all that stuff. This isn't really about you, Rick. This is about this entire process. If you don't have a good trade strategy, you can do all the work of a professional trader, but without a trade strategy, you're not going to continue to grow. Um, I really think you did a lot of the things that professional traders do on our desk every single day to put themselves in a position to have a really good day. The one thing you did not do at all was have a really good trade strategy. The best part of this is you're doing so much good work that if you do a little bit of that, if you take the time to write out what is my trade strategy, all of a sudden you might have changed the entire trajectory of your trading career, of your opportunity here, of everything you're going to do. It's a little bit more work, but you need to do it because you can't sit here, we can't sit here and really evaluate this trade effectively without 
understanding what your trade strategy was and how well you executed according to that strategy. Because all I see is I made these trades and I sort of put myself in a good position and it worked out. And that's great. I love that. I love it when things work out for people in the trading world and I wish it worked more often. I'm always concerned about what happens if it didn't work out. If you don't have a trade strategy and you get tested, are you gonna make a mistake? If you don't have a trade strategy and it works in your favor and all of a sudden you're up more money than you imagined you possibly could be. Because what I saw from this was what? Uh, you were up, go back to the, the chart please. It looks like you got in at what? 203 and a half on that second one, roughly, right? You know, without really taking any heat on that position, let's, let's assume you, you, so you were full size 203 and a half. Let's assume you didn't take any heat on that position. You covered half at new low of day, which was what, 201 and a half? Yeah. So that's two points. And then say you held that other half with a stop break even or even slightly profitable. What did it go down? Another two and a half points from there? Yeah. So by doing nothing, by having a trade strategy versus making a trading decision in a spot where you really didn't need to make one, you could have gone from making, say you're trading this with a thousand shares, making $2,000 in the trade to making, you know, so, so you make $1,000 on the first lot with the $2 down move, and then another, what, $1,000, $3,000 total? Like, you know, you really could have put yourself in a really good position by, you know, being 50% more profitable in a trade by just having a trade strategy. And that's just in this one circumstance, right? 50% yeah. more profitable by, doing, by just having a trade strategy and doing nothing when there was nothing to do. And that's a very simple straight trade strategy. But you think about being 50% better at anything in your life. If you're 50% more profitable in that trade strategy and you magnetize, magne like magnify that out for a period of time, you know, and you go from making $2,000 in a really good trade to making $3,000 in a really good trade without adding any risk. I mean, that's a massive increase in what your P&L is gonna look like, in what your life is gonna look like, in what your trading is gonna look like. So that's the importance of these trade strategies, is it takes away the I'm kind of guessing, and I'm guilty of it too. I get into a trade and if I don't have a trade strategy, I tend to make poor trading decisions. But you think about it, if you can put yourself in a position to make 50% more money without doing any more work, but just having a trade strategy, I think most people would really like that. Yeah, definitely I can see trade strategy is so important. Um, I will have to I'll work more on that and thank you Jack for like all the advice appreciate it yeah of course um, I'm gonna have to score this because we score them all so let's really quickly go through it and then we'll be done sorry I took so so much of your time today but I really think that that any concerns about discipline any concerns about you know I just need to do this I need to do that you need a trade strategy first and then we can talk about all the other stuff um, stock selection eight out of ten I thought you did a really good job there uh, big picture eight out of ten I thought you did well there um, trade strategy, two out of 10. Like, you know, I thought you had good ideas. You had checks in your favor, that's what got a two. But I, I didn't really see a really good trade strategy here. Um, intraday fundamentals, nine out of 10. Technical analysis, nine out of 10. Reading the tape, nine out of 10. Um, technology, eight out of 10, because you did, again, you did what you need to do as a professional trader. You found the stocks that made sense to you. You put yourself in a good position. Those two things you use technology to do. That was really, really, really good. Um, review, five out of 10, because again, the trade strategy is just a little too loose. Um, diligence, four out of 10. Like, again, the trade strategy is just a little too loose. Like, we are traders. We need to do all the work that you did already, and then we have to take it one step further. If we can do that, I think we've got a, a really good shot here. Overall, uh, it's a 64 now. That doesn't really cut it on our desk, but I bet you you can get that score up by doing a little bit more work. Um, you know, you change trade strategy. If you come up with a really good trade strategy, trade management gets up, review goes up, diligence goes up. That's, that's perfect. So.
Hey, go ahead and click our subscribe button so you don't miss any of the videos they're producing for you in the trading community. And please take the time to add your feedback in the comment section for what videos you'd like for us to produce next and what you found helpful from this video from all of us at SMB. Train and trade well.